Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I will give you some introduction about shape functions. So you you will have uh, some kind of background for this uh, to continue uh, the study uh, further in this course. Because uh, as I think we discussed about this before in uh, probably in the uh, first few lecture of the course that uh, shape functions uh, will be used to uh, approximate the uh, geometry of the problems and also uh, approximate uh, the solution within the domains. So it is quite important. Uh, so we should have some kind of, you know, some background about this. Uh, there are two things that uh, uh, we talk about, about the shear functions. Uh, uh, first is about requirement of the shear functions, that uh, uh, what you need uh, to have, uh, you know, appropriate shear functions. And also, the second thing is about how to construct shear functions. So for the first thing, the requirements of chair functions. Uh, the chair functions uh, should have this, you know, at least these three things. That is the first, the completeness property. The second one is uh, compatibility. And the third one, uh, they should have uh, what we call geometric invariance or isotropy. So for the completeness requirement, uh, it is the requirement for convergence of a finite element solution. So this is quite important. And then uh, because of this, polynomials are mostly used in finite element method because uh, they are easily manipulated because we can, you know, as you know, uh, as we've seen before, uh, you need to uh, take derivative and also integrate it. Uh, uh, the shear function so for polynomials uh, to do that is not uh, really difficult that's one thing but uh, the second thing is also polynomials have good completeness property which is a uh, requirement for convergence of uh, the solution so uh, you should look at this one uh, the uh, a sequence of the shear functions. Okay, for example, we have Ni is a sequence of shear functions. Uh, we said it is complete if one can always find a number n and coefficients Ai such that uh, this equation is true for any epsilon greater than zero. So if you look at this equation, this is like uh, the uh, the exact solution of phi, and this is something like approximate solution of phi. So uh, uh, for a good approximate solution, this value, this absolute value should be very, very small, okay? Uh, so if you set epsilon to one number, for example, 10 to the power three, and if I can find, okay, uh, coefficient ai and m term of that coefficient, Okay, I don't care how, how large, let's say I can find. Uh, for example, if I said, okay, let's say uh, 10 terms can give uh, this value less than 10 to power minus 3. So that is good. But if I set another value of epsilon, let's say 10 to the power minus 6, which is much smaller than the first one, and I still can find number of m to satisfy this equation. Okay, that means this uh, shear function in i has a completeness property. Okay, so you may need, uh, uh, instead of 10 terms, you may need like uh, 20, 30, or, you know, whatever term it is. Uh, but you can, you know, set this uh, equation to be true. So that is uh, uh, a completeness requirement for a set of chair function. For example, if you look at this curve, which is uh, uh, some, you know, some a function here and we like to approximate this function and uh, you use something like a constant chair function uh, like this for each segment or each element and uh, of course uh, 
if you uh, doesn't use uh, enough uh, number of elements, okay, the approximation may not be that good. But if you increase number of elements, that is, uh, uh, the size of element is getting smaller and smaller, uh, you may be able to, you know, uh, get convert solution close to this one. So in this case, uh, uh, this shear function has a convenience property. Okay, so this is what I said here, that shear function, uh, a set of shear function should be selected to ensure that improvement in the approximation occurs with increasing number of uh, element or number of M, okay? And uh, so I try to relate this thing into the equation and the, you know, the function that uh, we seen before in the finite element formulation. For example, if you have a functional like this, we should get thing uh, very familiar with this one, okay? The function on which is the integral is a function of function, okay? And we integrate over the whole domain. For example, if we talk about the bar problems uh, that we do before, okay? This uh, omega become uh, a one-dimensional domain. So this is something like Lie integral. And uh, a function inside should be a function of first-order derivative of phi, for example. But if we talk about B, Okay, it should contain second order derivative of phi that is m equal to two. Okay, like that. So let's say we have this, and then we try to approximate phi using uh, Taylor seal expansion about okay uh, certain point of x. Let's say x zero. So we approximate phi around the point x zero. So we have this term, and uh, as you know, uh, this series uh, is uh, you know uh, infinite series. So you can go on and on and on like this, but but eventually, we have to truncate or stop at certain term. Now, okay, so if you go on like this, let's say if we approximate phi as a phi hat, as an approximate solution of phi using polynomial like this. So let's say polynomial of order p. Okay, it's like this. And then you put this uh, polynomial of phi back into the uh, Taylor seal expansion here. The solution, the approximate solution of phi will become like this. And then it means that uh, we should stop at this term because after this, you get nothing. Because we have only a polynomial up to order p. Okay, so that would, we get something like a truncation, a truncation uh, error, okay, of this approximation. And so this error can be approximate is something like a, uh, about this, okay? The, the, the order of error is something like about this, okay? 